So here we are, mate. How you doing today? I'm with Cam Jennings. He's the guy. Uh, he, he's one of the, the the greatest guy that I've met in this MMO space, and he's here for I, I guess more than ten years. Am I right, Cam? Yeah, it seems like it's been a little while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> good. Hey, it's good to be here on this interview, anyway, man. Even though I'm an old fart. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's an honor, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks to you, Cam, because I have a set of questions. I'm going to interview three big marketers like you and uh, three different aspects. So none of you have seen the answers for of the other guys. So it's completely, in fact, you don't even know the questions. So I'm going to uh, write, uh, because I know you're a busy guy and you have uh, lunches to do. We'll talk about that later. So I'm going to just should I do right now? So first question, when do you think is the best time of the year for launching a product? Uh, it's got to be, um, you know, the day after Thanksgiving, what just happened, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, like Black Friday through Cyber Monday. Uh, it's the easiest time throughout the whole year to make money. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why is because um, there, is a, uh, there is a belief that uh, people have that they are being ripped off. So let's say you wanted to sell a, pro let's say you had a thousand dollar product that you wanted to sell and you say, well, I'm going to sell this thousand dollar product for $25 because I just want to give a great deal. Right. Well, most people are going to say, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> That's ridiculous. What are you trying to you know, sell me here? This is a scam, but black Friday through cyber Monday, uh, a lot of people who buy things, uh, they, they feel like they're going to get a good deal. Like it's like they've been conditioned to feel like that's when outrageous deals happen. It's a crazy time where people suspend their disbelief. Uh, so I would say that's probably the most profitable time. Black Friday through Cyber Monday, it's very easy to make money during that four day period. Um, but then, uh, you know, anytime is a good time to launch. You know, if you got a good idea and you got some ambition, <laughs> you, 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 you don't don't wait around for Black Friday to to launch. I mean, just get on it. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks, Cam. So next next one, what's your schedule to hit your list with your product? So like uh, like my promotional schedule. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, usually I do like four day launches, and uh, for me, I started out doing seven day launches. And, uh, you know, it's just a little too long. Uh, you know, a lot of when you're running affiliate traffic uh, to these launches, affiliates are busy. They got other things they need to promote. Um, I think uh, the there's a sweet spot between making sure everybody knows about your product as far as like customers and as far as affiliates getting the word out to customers. And then between like dragging on so long and everybody's moved on to something else. Yeah. And for me, that sweet spot is four days. So I run four day launches and when I do these launches, what I do is I do an email in the morning uh, and then I do an email in the afternoon. So I do two emails a day. Okay. Um, yeah. And then on the, th on the fourth day, um, sometimes I'll go three emails. I'll put a scarcity email in. If you're going to go two and three emails a day, you need to hit on a different angle with every single email. You can't be coming with that same go here by this angle. You need to, you need to change up your angle on the emails promote promotional so okay okay thank say. you Cam. Cool, cool to know if someone's launching for the first time what would be a good strategy to embark affiliates i'm not sure i understand the question ask it again please yeah uh, if, uh I'm, I'm launching for the first time what would be a good strategy to embark big or mid affiliates because i don't know yeah. anybody i'm okay really... yeah. Yeah, yeah sure i got you um so look um with affiliates, uh, you know, this whole thing with launching products, it's, it's kind of a, a marathon. It's not a sprint race. So the first thing I would say is you need to uh, be prepared to launch more than one product. You need to be able to be consistent with your launching. Be prepared to launch at least three products, not just one, three. Over, you know, over a pace of, you know, a launch every one to one and a half months. Um, and then that first launch... Um, what you can do is you can look on uh, you can look at other launches that happen in the space and many of them run affiliate contests and you can check the affiliate contest leaderboards for affiliates who have ranked 
and, and those uh, contests. And you can put a list together of those affiliates, maybe a couple hundred, a couple hundred of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can start there by reaching out to those people with the understanding that, you know, many of them won't have anything to do with you because they don't know you. You're brand new. Nobody knows who you are and they can't make a lot of money off of you um, or they can't, you know, leverage you in any way. Uh, those are the two reasons why affiliates would promote your product to make a lot of money or to get you to promote something for them later on, like so to leverage you, to leverage that relationship. Yep. When you're new, nobody can do that. So um, understand, you reach out to a couple hundred. The more you reach out to, the better chance you got of getting them on board. Um, but also understand that if you look at it like a marathon and you continue to build those relationships and you continue to launch consistently, you will gain the respect and it will start to build for you. So. Okay. That's what I'd say, man. Cool, cool. So what kind of product do you think has the best opportunity nowadays? Software training, templates? Yeah, so it's, well, it's, it's, it depends on the market you're in, right? It depends on the market you're in. If we're talking about the make money online market, um, you know, most of the products need to connect to money, right? And it's, it's not about like software versus information product versus some utilitarian product like templates it's about the offer right what is the offer man like what can i get from this thing what's this gonna do for me will this product show people the vision man because the vision in mmo is i want to make a bunch of money (laughs) i want to quit my job i I don't i want to find a good safe thing for after i retire there's a lot of people out there who's getting ready to retire and they're looking for some easy push button thing Like, so can you show them the vision, man? Can you connect where they're at right now to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? And if you can do that, whether it's templates, whether it's a piece of software, or whether it's an information product, you're golden. It's about the offer. That's that's what I would say. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's about the offer, the angle, how, how you attack this. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, exactly, man. Because think about this, you know, um, I could put out a book and I could call it... Um, you know, the uh, under the radar guide to outsourcing, right? And I'm going to get so many people who buy that. But Tim Ferriss put out a book called The 4-Hour Work Week, which is essentially the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's called The 4-Hour Work Week. And that's a different kind of like thing. Like I feel different about that. And it's, it captivates. Yeah. And I think a good offer captivates people. And, and if you don't captivate people, you're done. So <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, Cam. So, uh, what are your strategies on social media media when launching a product? Yeah, I mean, look, with social media, um, like for me, you know, probably I would say, you know, last year, 86 percent of my uh, financial transactions happened through email. So that means the majority of the money my business makes comes from email. Uh, what that means is, uh, does that mean social media doesn't matter? No, no, it matters. Uh, but it matters as an audience building tool. It, it matters as a way to stay top of mind. Um, but it's not like this is where I go to make money. Um, now, maybe that's a little different if you're running paid ads. Uh, but as far as just doing free, free organic stuff, like on Facebook or some of these other places, um, you can make far, far more money uh, through email marketing. Um, you know, that's been my experience. So I use social media as a way to stay top of mind, to stay in people, stay on people's radar when they think of, um, online marketing and as an audience building tool, that's what I would use it for. Okay. Okay. Cool. Come. So, uh, do you want to give us the link, uh, to your last product? Well, I, 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 you can send it to me because I think it's the, you launched a few, a few, Weeks ago, the trench gimmicks, I guess. I launched. Um, and then. Yeah. yeah, I launched a trench gimmicks. It, you know, it's funny because it's like dog years and, and, and mark and make money online space. Like, uh, you know, hey, look, seven weeks is like seven years. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long time ago, man. Yeah. A couple <laughs> months ago, I launched trench gimmicks. Yeah. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I launched uh, I launched something called Membership Massacre. Yeah. And, uh, and there again, we're talking about angles, right? We're talking about different angles for promotion. 
membership massacre, it came out around Halloween. And here in the United States, Halloween is kind of a, a bigger holiday. You know, people celebrate it. They dress up and, you know, go trick or treating. Everybody watch spooky movies uh, around that time of year. So everybody's in that kind of mode. So the idea of, of doing a product and giving it that angle of like Halloween, uh, it pulls people in, it gets their attention. Uh, so this was one about membership sites uh, and, and had a different kind of angle on membership programs. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So Okay, I will put the, the link for, uh, for that product uh, in the description box of this video. Yeah, okay? yeah, sure. Thanks, man. So what do you think about having a Facebook group of your own to grow up your name? Yeah, I mean, Facebook groups are really good. Uh, I like I like them better, uh, and everybody's different on this. I, I like Facebook groups for a couple reasons. I, I like them better back in 2016. It seemed like they were more powerful for engagement, but still, I've seen some Facebook groups now that have been nurtured, and, and if you nurture a Facebook group and make it interesting, um, yeah, you can use it. It's a nice uh, extension of, of an email list. Not as good as an email list because the conversation is not one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, there's too many chefs in the kitchen in a Facebook group. If I say something on the Facebook group, uh, people aren't just looking at what I said. They're going to look at what I said and the message I, I put out to them, and then they're going to look at all the comments. Yeah. So now there's a lot of different things happening up here. Um, so it's not so great for a buying decision. I mean, you can, you can sell on Facebook groups, and, and it's fine. Um, I got a, I got two Facebook groups um, right now currently, and, and, and they're good. Um, advantage, when I put something on my Facebook timeline, uh, it, it's a slave to the timeline, right? It's, it's a slave to what the Facebook algorithm, who it, who it wants to show to, that, that to. You know, not everyone's even going to see it. And by tomorrow, the people who do see it, it's going to be buried. It's, you know, if I, if I do a 10-minute video live streaming, Uh, that teaches people some tips, and then I recommend a product. Well, first of all, Facebook's not even going to show it to everybody. Uh, second of all, uh, the people Facebook does show it to, by midday today, it'll be buried. It'll be gone. It'll be down the timeline. Yeah. So a Facebook group alleviates that a little bit because it doesn't get buried as fast. It stays, it stays more relevant in the group. So it's good in that respect. Uh, but still, personally, I think – it would be very smart to use your Facebook group to put people on an email list. That, that's what I would say. Okay, okay, cool. So which are the uh, uh, three more important things when launching a product? Three things. Oh, the three most important things? Yeah. So, okay, so like essentially as complicated as people feel like product launching is and as much of a pain in the butt they feel like it is, Um, it's, first of all, it's important for them to learn it because this is something that's been proven year after year after year to make people money. The art of low ticket product launching is an amazing way to build a solid buyer's list and to make a lot of money. It's been proven over and over and over again. And I know it sounds complicated to people and they shy away from it. However, it comes down to three things, create, package, release. So. If we think about these three things, um, you want to create a good product that can help people. And I think in 2021, uh, value also is brevity. So you don't want it to be, it doesn't need to be too long. It needs to be impactful. Um, two, uh, package. Uh, you want to package it in automated sales material. That automated sales material, that sales page, uh, it needs to nail the offer. Like, what is the reason you put that product together? All right. And whatever that reason is, whatever got you excited enough to make that product, man, that needs to be conveyed on that sales page. You need to captivate people. Um, and then the third part release, uh, you need a good plan for traffic. Now, in my experience, the best traffic is my email list. It's the warmest, highest converting traffic. My second highest converting traffic is referred traffic. That's affiliate traffic. So, you know, you need a little bit of a good strategy to get those affiliates on board. Now let's not beat around the bush. It's expensive traffic, you know, and, and, and make money online space. You know, we pay affiliates 75 to a hundred percent on front end offers. It's very expensive traffic, uh, but it's worth it 
uh, because you get really valuable leads. Uh, you do need a plan for making money from those leads after the launch. Um, but I think it comes down to create package release and try to do a good job in each of those phases. That's what I would say, man. Does that help or is that too, like, too much? <laughs> I, don't know. I think it's, oh, I know, saying the three things only, it's, I guess there are, there are like 20 important things when you're going to launch something. But I was just to, to you know, to, uh, to pull out, to pull up these three most important things. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think the most important thing out of all this stuff is make sure you nail the offer, right? Because I think people come into this game and they try to make a good product. All right. The first thing they do when they try to make a good product is they ignore brevity, right? And that's your first mistake. You, you don't ignore brevity in 2021 because people don't have a lot of time to deal with you. Yeah. If you're going to write a special report, 25 to 30 pages. <laughs> you're not trying to write the great American novel. You're not going to create it. You're not going to create impact. People aren't going to read it. Yeah. They're going to make it. They're going to see that it's 75 pages and they're going to be like, oh, dude, oh. I'll come back to this man. <laughs> and they never come back to it. So you don't create impact and nobody reads your emails after the fact. So look, it, when you create a product, it's, it's, it's brevity is important. Um, if you're going to do an audio or a video, you know, try not to go over an hour, you yeah. know, um, But I think uh, once you got your good product, um, then the absolute most important thing you can do, especially if you're new and you don't have any influence or list or anything, you got to nail the offer. The offer is very important. You have to captivate not just the customers, but also the affiliates. Okay. Show them something new that they haven't seen before. Cool. Not just the customers. For every customer that you captivate, you know, if you captivate an affiliate, that's worth 50 customers yeah sure. So, sure so like what's in that product that's a little bit different oh you made a product about list building cool what's different about it what what is something a little different that we haven't seen before um you know that hangs people up a little bit but i'm just being honest about it you know you need to be able to captivate the affiliates and the uh the uh, customers so that's what i'd say okay okay can so Can you tell us what's your secret strategy to do a successful launching? Secret strategy to do an successful, yeah. successful. I can't tell you that, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. Uh, I have to play. I have to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I don't really think there's there's uh, a big secret for a successful launching other than, and I, I think this is the thing that people have the most trouble with. You know, once you get past this idea of a good product, um, And then you get past this idea of a good offer that captivates. Um, I think the biggest obstacle that people are going to uh, have trouble with is consistency. Uh, can you do it again? Because one launch is not going to get you to the promised land. Generally, every once in a while, someone comes along and just knocks it out of the park. Uh, but still, even then, uh, if you can't do anything with that, then it'll dwindle down and, and you'll be done. You need to do it consistently. So understand that it's a marathon and you know, plan to repeat the process. So that's, that's what I would say is the secret to success in the launch game is, is consistency in your launching. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. So do you prefer Warrior Plus, JVC or ClickBank or none of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, these are uh, affiliate platforms. So like when we think about launching a product, like if you got a, a good list, right? And you want to make all the money, you don't need to launch on affiliate uh, you know, platforms like Warrior Plus or JVZoo or, or ClickBank. The only reason you launch on these platforms is to pull affiliate traffic because you got to understand these platforms take a, take a transactional fee. They take like a percentage of every transaction. Well, what is the benefit to you uh, for giving them this transactional fee? The only reason to launch on a place like Warrior Plus is to gain access to this large group of affiliates that's always watching Warrior Plus for new things to promote. Yeah. So you're trying to run affiliate traffic. So if you're trying to run affiliate traffic, um, which one do I prefer? Right now, I've been uh, running through Warrior Plus for the last few years quite a bit because of the fact that Warrior Plus uh, specializes in make money online offers uh, and also Um, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, make money online offers. And then also, um, it, it seems like this, this could just be wrong. 
it's just, maybe it's just my perception, but it feels like Warrior Plus is is more um, friendly towards information products. Like it seems like JVZoo focuses more on software and utilitarian style packages, um, but Warrior Plus you know, they do focus a lot on utilitarian and, and software, but it feels like they have a, so there's more information products on Warrior Plus. Yeah. And I deal in a lot of information products. So to me, it, it makes more sense. Uh, there's a new player in the game though, called AppSumo uh, that oh, I've been yeah. hearing yeah. some, yeah. 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 Inter- inter- I've been hearing some interesting things about AppSumo uh, and I have to check that out because it looks really cool. Okay. Okay. So we are uh, getting. To oh, and now. another thing is I've been looking into that. I'll tell you this. Uh, is Warrior Forum, uh, because what? over and over and over again throughout my career, things are hot and then they're forgotten, right? And people forget about it and move on to the new thing because we're always looking for the new thing. Well, you know, when I first got into this game, uh, Warrior Forum was a big deal, and then people kind of forgot about it. But lately, I've been looking back into Warrior Forum as a potential platform to launch from. Uh, so. I will say Warrior Forum and AppSumo are things that are on my radar for places to launch from that might be interesting uh, to pull more traffic. But uh, right now, my preferred place to launch is the Warrior Plus. Okay, okay, okay. So we are getting to an end. It's only two questions. So it, and okay. this, I guess this is really easy for you. How mm-hmm. many OTOs are a good choice for a product? Well, uh, let me start that by saying that the more OTOs you put in your, pro- you probably already know what I'm going to say because we work together, but uh, the, the more OTOs you have in your funnel, the more money you're going to make. <laughs> that, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, th- if you, we just want to cut it right down to brass tacks and get to the bottom line, the more uh, products you have in your funnel, the more money you're going to make. Uh, that being said, is there such thing as customer experience? Yes, there's such thing as customer experience. Anyone who's ever been a customer and bought something and then like they went into like nightmare mode trying to get through like a funnel that they they see no end in sight. By the time they get to the end of the funnel, Jorge, they forgot what the hell they bought. Yeah, absolutely. What the hell did I even buy? I need to go to YouTube and watch some videos. I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. (laughs) I need some cat videos to pull me out of this. uh, this, I don't even know what this is. Is this purgatory? Where am I? (laughs) You know, so like, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, to me, I mean, I don't know. For me personally, I think if I want to kind of maximize my profits, but still like maintain the customer integrity, uh, keep the customer experience intact, I should say it's six for me. I, I think six is pretty good. I mean, I've done eight on occasion. Right now, I've been doing like four or five um, in the funnel. If you go less than four, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And, and what I mean by four is you got your front end product and then you got four products in the funnel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. They need to be congruent. Right. And, and, and I think uh, if you go less than four, then you're, you're leaving too much money on the table. Okay. If, uh, if you want to make as much money as you can and still keep that customer experience intact. And uh, I think six is good. Um, you know, but I think, when you start getting into like 12, 14, like 16 products in the funnel, it can be a nightmare and you, you ruin yeah. the customer experience. That's right. what I'd say, man. Everybody's different though. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I don't know if there's a right answer on that, but. Okay. Okay. So last, last one and we are done. Any bad, well, I say any bad experience. Any bad experience? Any, I know that there are plenty of bad experience, but which one is the one that you remember the most? Well, in this, of course. I, yeah, I, I would say that. Well, what I would tell people is, is that uh, I have been the kind of person, t- you know, first of all, you can't take this game personal. You, you know, you need to take the emotions out of it when you launch products. And that's not always easy to do because, you know, you put a lot of work into your launches when it comes to getting ready for a launch and putting it out there. You put a lot of time and effort into it. And it's easy to get a little bit emotional about it, but I find that I do the best when I take emotion out of it. Um, that being said, I see a lot of newer, newer people in this game. You know, they start YouTube channels and they, they do this and they do that. And they want to like uh, talk bad about certain launches that, um, you know, they call people out and they, 
they talk bad about this, talk bad about that and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's cool in the short term because, you know, people, they make people feel like they can trust them. Oh man, this dude's calling this person out, man. He's one of the good ones or she's one of the good ones. I can trust this person, you know, but when you call somebody out, that's your peer, uh, you know, you got to understand they carry influence as well. And, you know, they could carry a lot of influence and, you know, you could start alienating large chunks of people to you as a marketer. And it's not good for business. You might feel like you're doing something good. You might feel like you're doing the right thing, but, you know, I think it's better sometimes to just focus on what you're doing and, you know, not worry about what other people are doing. And, and I, I hate saying that, like, I hate telling people, hey, you should just turn the cheek if you think someone's doing something bad. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, in the make money online space and in internet marketing, uh, there's always going to be someone doing something bad because uh, this is about money. And honestly, to be, to be fair with you, like, it's not just to make money online space. It's business in general, like any, any space. Uh, people are, there's always going to be people who are just trying to, you know, rip people off and just trying to make money, a quick buck. Uh, and you got to ask yourself, what do you want to do? Are you here to help people? And to make money, or are you here to be like the internet marketing police and like call out every villain? Because for every one you call out, there's going to be like 10 more and like they're all going to gang up on you and they're going to destroy your business. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yes, I would say it's better just to turn the other cheek and focus on helping customers and uh, just doing, doing the right thing from, from your standpoint and, and just not worry about what all these other fools are doing over here. That's what I would say, and, and I don't even remember what the original question was, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's the answer, damn it. <laughs> anybody experience, I, I was ready to anybody experience for yourself in this, but you're talking, uh, what you're talking, I can pretty much imagine what happened. So you don't have to put names, you know, uh, I, I know, I know pretty much what you're talking about. So, and I guess our audience is uh, smart enough to know what you're talking about. So this is it, Cam. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy guy, so your time is golden for me and for our people. So if you want to say something, uh, it's your time. All I would say to everybody is, listen, guys, I know product launching might seem a little intimidating, but it's no different than like learning a martial art or learning some other discipline. And the fact of the matter is, this one can make you money. It can make you a lot of money. And it's worth your time and effort to learn how to do it. So that's what I would say. Good luck out there, guys. Okay. Thanks, Cam. Thanks for your time. Bye.